So you came to see a review about a subwoofer. Well, feller, let me tell you. Today I'm going to be talking about the Monolith Monoprice 13-inch THX Ultra subwoofer. Now this sucker is a beast. It's a beast on the wallet. About $1,700 US just to get it. And then it's a beast in terms of weight. About 150 pounds. You got subwoofers and you want to move them upstairs with one of these bad boys, you're going to need help. But the good news is this thing performs like so few other can. It's got tons of bass output and I've got the data to show you. It's got smooth extended frequency response and I got the data to show you. And that subwoofer by itself, you take that little driver out right over here. Man, that sucker has some stroke. It's about one and a half inches, one way, linear, verified by the clipple insert video here. Yeah, that's a laser. I do it big here at Aaron's Audio Corner. So let's go ahead and get into this review, talk about a few things you may not already know, and then we're gonna go. Really wanted to keep that going, but I've actually got COVID and my throat already hurts, so I can't keep doing the voiceover like that. But that was Randy. I call him Randy. I got that from uh, a family member in Kentucky, named after a family member in Kentucky. Anyway, before I keep rambling, I'm actually going to keep this short. Okay, so here's the deal. Audioholics, James Larson at Audioholics reviewed this subwoofer. And honestly, it wasn't even a subwoofer that I wanted necessarily to review. But when I was asked if I wanted to review some of the Monoprice THX speakers, they came from a couple other reviewers and they actually just came on a pallet. And within that pallet came this 13 inch subwoofer. And I thought, you know what? I've already got it here. I might as well test it. So with that said, my results, I'm going to show them to you right here. Now, this is a table explaining the result differences between the Monolith 12, the 13, and the 15. What you see here is that at about 25 hertz or so, there's a separation in the results where the things kind of flip-flop. So the 15-inch has more mid-bass output, while the 13-inch seems to have a little bit more low-bass output. And note that the results that I'm showing are with the THX mode enabled. I did not do extended mode because what I found in the past is that extended mode doesn't really do anything for you. It basically kind of bypasses the, the THX distortion limits and it gets you a little bit more low frequency output, but at a cost to the mid band frequency. So maybe like 30 Hertz and above. And therefore I personally would probably lean more toward the THX setting, but that's up to you. Once you get into the room, you can decide what you want to do. Now the subwoofer also has a few different settings in terms of ported versus sealed. So you have three ports, you can seal each one up individually, or you can seal all of them up, or you can let them be completely unsealed, and therefore you have a completely ported subwoofer enclosure. And the difference really there is going to be how much low base you want in your room. If you have a smaller room, you may find that a sealed version of this subwoofer works better for you. Otherwise there may be just too much base. And I know some people think, can you ever have too much bass? Well, yes, you can. Now the flip side of that is if you have too much bass, it's easier to equalize down than to try to bring something up that wasn't there to begin with. Now that we've kind of got those numbers out of the way and we understand how good in terms of output is the 13 inch, in terms of response linearity, the response basically backs up what I just said. So you can see that the sealed version has a more shallow roll off, but it starts a little bit sooner in frequency. Whereas the ported version does extend a little bit lower, but note that at around 200 Hertz, there is a strong resonance. Now this appears to be a vent resonance. Are you going to hear that? Probably not. I don't know anybody that's going to be running this subwoofer up that high in frequency, but say for example, that you do want to run this subwoofer that high in frequency, that's something you're going to need to understand and know. I would recommend then that the sealed configuration would make the most sense. Now something else to send you along your way with, is knowing that this subwoofer driver has a ton of output, a ton of one-way linear 
excursion. And by that, I mean an IEC standard because a lot of driver manufacturers will spec linear excursion. And a lot of the times what you find is that's a physical displacement based on the voice coil and the gap. The IEC standard way, which is how the Clipple measures the subwoofers and other drivers, is based on a set of thresholds for distortion at varying parameters. So you have motor force, suspension, and inductance, and it looks at those, figures out how much distortion there is due to symmetry or asymmetry from the coil moving and the suspension moving as well. And it figures out how much linear stroke does this speaker have? And by that standard, I actually was not even able to get this subwoofer to resolve its linear stroke, meaning that it exceeds what I was able to measure in my system. And I was able to get it to above 32 millimeters one way. That's a heck of a lot of stroke. To put that in perspective, the closest subwoofer that I've measured in terms of just linear excursion to date has been 17 millimeters. That was a 12 inch subwoofer driver and that was back around 2012, 2013. So this thing is about two times that in terms of linear one-way excursions. It's got a ton of linear throw and then put in the right configuration with the enclosure, this thing will do plenty of volume in the low frequencies. You should not want for more if you're in a medium size room and if you're in a large size room, it should have no problem filling that. Now the caveat here is that I typically recommend to buy two subwoofers or more if you can afford it. And the reason for that is because when you put a subwoofer into a room, there are different peaks and nulls that you are going to hear based on the physical distance of you to that subwoofer and the surrounding walls, ceiling, floor, etc. Because of that, some things you simply cannot fix with equalization. So you need to either move the subwoofer or you need to add another one or another two and kind of help distribute that base. That way you get good distributed base between each seat. I hate using the same word twice, but it's the best thing I could come up with is these things aren't scripted, as you probably guessed. So with all of that said, ultimately what we wind up with is 1700 bucks for a ton of base. Now, I don't really talk about value because what I consider value is gonna be different from person to person. Personally speaking, I might consider DIYing a subwoofer. And in fact, that's what I use in my own home theater is a set of DIY speakers ported down to about 18 Hertz, four cubic feet, huge suckers, but that's not for everybody. And some people simply don't have the tools or the know-how or the courage yet. Stay, stay on that path. I promise you, you'll get there to do that. So you want to go look at something that's ready made. So you might look at something like the mono price in terms of warranty. It's a five-year warranty. So you should be covered there if you run into any issues, because I know that some people have talked about that in the past. I will also tell you that in my listening and in my testing, I've not run into any issues. This subwoofer has been through two other reviewers, Joe and Tail, and as I said, James Larson from Audioholics showed up kind of beat up, scratched up, but it's still working. So in terms of actual stability, no issues there that I can talk about. I had this subwoofer driver on my clipple stand for hours and hours doing multiple rounds of testing, trying to determine the linear excursion. And I could smell the glue from the spider numerous times. You could walk into the garage and you could actually feel the heat from the driver itself. I'm, I'm not kidding. That's how much punishment I put this drive unit through and it's been fine. It still works. Matter of fact, that's it for this review. I told you it was going to be short and sweet. There's not a whole lot to say about subwoofer. Now, if you want to talk about what I heard in my listening room, it's so room dependent that I don't like using stuff like fast bass or slow bass. I put equalization on a subwoofer as soon as I get it. There's, there's no point in using a subwoofer without equalization, at least in my humble opinion. And I've been doing this for a very, very, very long time. So with that personal experience, what I want is a subwoofer that has the ability to provide the playback levels that I need. And the single 13 inch definitely did that. Certainly in my living room. Now I wasn't able to get it up the home theater stairs. That's just way too much for me to carry. I actually trucked it, loaded it on a dolly and brought it into my living room. My living room is an open floor plan. I don't know how many square feet, but I don't know, just rough math, 24 feet by 24 feet, uh, cubic feet, about nine foot ceiling. So I'll let you handle that. 
as I said, open floor plan into a dining room and living room, and then into a kitchen. Had no problem pressurizing the room, but typical knolls and peaks that you normally get with just one subwoofer. And I still would recommend buying a second subwoofer if you can. If you can't afford two at once, but you really want to get the output from this one, buy it, maybe come back and buy a second one later. But I do encourage you to, to seriously strongly consider buying at least two subwoofers. That will help you out with the distributed base a lot more. Now, you don't necessarily have to have that if it's just you, one person, in a single seat, and you don't really care about the other people that are sitting around you. Similar to my discussion about why center channel speakers suck. If you don't care about the people that are sitting off the side and what they're hearing, then be selfish, rock your EQ, knock down those peaks, deal with the knolls, you'll be okay. But if you care about everybody else, then I do suggest buying a second subwoofer. Now, I also need to say that, I think I already mentioned this, but the Monoprice subwoofer did come directly from Monoprice. I was not paid uh, for this review or anything of that nature, but but I will drop an affiliate link in the description below. If you're interested in the person, this subwoofer or anything that kind of goes along this realm, uh, make sure you click through one of those links. That helps me out with a small, and I mean like 4% or so percent commission. It doesn't cost you anything extra. I'm not touting the subwoofer as the greatest thing ever. The data handles all of that. I'm just relaying to you my experience with it. And that's really all I can tell you. So if you don't mind, if you want to help out in that way, please consider using that affiliate link. With all of that said, I am out. I will talk to you all later. Take care. Peace. You're still here? Man, you better go on and get out of here. Get, get now. <laughs>